boy, here I go vlogging again. <laughs> um, so, I actually enjoyed myself quite a bit with the last video. Um, ended up being a lot longer than I intended it to be, so that was just a, um, poor planning on my part. Um, this one's going to be a somewhat of a rant um, in regards to the Fallout series, the direction it seems to be heading, and the mistakes made with the newest entry. Um, so starting off, I will cover my history with the Fallout series as it relates to myself. Um, I was not one of the people who originally played the first and second games on PC. I've never really been a PC gamer at all. Um, when I was very, very young, I used to play games on my dad's computer, but that was like literally toddler age. Um, <clears throat> so when I first heard about Fallout 3, I was extremely skeptical. Um, I did not enjoy the trailer at E3. Um, I thought the graphics were directly comparable to Oblivion at the time. And the game essentially just looked like Oblivion with guns. Um, coming from Bethesda, it just seemed like that was the case. It didn't seem like it was a series that they had acquired and decided to breathe new life into. It seemed like it was a cash grab. Um, I wasn't so much into the development politics of gaming as I was, as I am now, as I was then. Anywho. Um, but, uh, when I did finally get around to playing the game, I actually did enjoy it. Um, Fallout 3 has one of the most, uh, time-tested, uh, introductions of any video game out there. Um, I'm really surprised that there hasn't been a game that has done something like that before. And there probably is. I'm just not aware of it. Um, but the, the formula was fantastic. You know, it allowed us to experience being a child and, you know, there was some time skip, sure, but you essentially grew up in the vault. And it was a very uh, fast-forwarded experience, but you still got the general feel of aging. Um, so, you know, that was something they definitely nailed. Um, Peter Molyneux, looking at you, uh, could take a few pointers from Bethesda on that point. But, uh... I did feel like, as I played through Fallout 3, the general aesthetic of the game was extremely lacking. Um, there's a lot of grays and browns and greens. And the greens that are there are very muted greens. The grays are, again, just, they're grays. Uh, the browns are dingy browns. They're not particularly... Uh, exciting browns. I mean, brown can't really be an exciting color on its own, but, um, I mean, wood is an example of brown actually doing a good job as a color. Um, but it is, it's not, it's not an uh, exciting atmosphere to be in Fallout 3, and a lot of people will tell you, oh, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's post-apocalypse. Well, yes, that's that's certainly true to a point. Um, however, a game still has to look good. And there's a lot more that a game can do 
to convey the apocalyptic feel rather than just turning the contrast down and muting all the colors or putting them through a grayscale filter or a sepia tone or some mishmash of the two. Um, the main storyline was pretty good despite being really short. Um, and I mean really short. Uh, but it was it was a good storyline. Um, you felt invested in the characters' uh, issues, and with taking their journey and seeing it through. Um, there's a lot of side quests in Fallout Three that can be very distracting from that main storyline, but they're fun. The problem I find with those side quests, and this ends up being a problem throughout the series, is that the side quests very much feel like uh, a task that you know you'll be rewarded for. Very seldom do you accept someone's, hey, get me this, or save me from this, or get me back here, or find my, my boyfriend quest without thinking, hey, there's going to be something good in this for me. Um, y you know that you're going to get something out of it, and it's like a uh, an immersion break in the series, and it's not too fun to deal with that, because you really want to feel like you're there, especially when you know, you're playing an RPG game like this that is so heavily dependent on you wanting to be in that world. Um, moving on though from that, the ending was crap. Everybody agrees. It is not something that's really up for debate. Um, this game came out, I want to say around 2007, 2008. I can't recall exactly. And... The thought of beating the final boss and then going to credits and being pushed back to your last save file was ridiculous at the time. It, it's, it's unheard of for a game that is that, that new, and still today, for that new to do something like that. And I think it actually did something good for the gaming industry in showing that players did not want that at all and it was not something they would put up with. Um, so when you, when you end a game, you allow players to keep playing if it's a RPG like that. You don't, you don't fuck them over like that. Or at least you warn them, okay? that shit's about to hit the fan and you're not going to be able to go back. New Vegas made a good point to do that. They they warned you several times. Hey, this is the end. Make sure you're ready and make sure you really want to do this. Because if there's any side quests you want to go catch up on, now's the time. Um, DLC for Fallout 3. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people like it. A lot of people feel mixed between the various entries. I personally feel like I like all of them quite a bit. Um, I did not play Operation Anchorage for quite some time after it first released because by the time Operation Anchorage had released I still did not own Fallout 3. Um, I had played it at a friend's house a couple times and had continued to do so, but I had not actually gotten my own copy yet. Um, but yeah, Operation Anchorage was really cool for me because I tend to really get into the like military esque um, aspects in games like that, the like uh, mill sim kind of stuff. And Operation Anchorage kind of scratched that itch a bit. Um, it wasn't wasn't 
perfect in any way. But it it did feel like you were kind of part of that war, you know, that, uh, the war that had been talked about for so long. And, you know, you hear it referenced all the time in the game. And you don't really know what it's about because you, you weren't there. But this gives you the opportunity to actually have been there, at least partially, in a skirmish. And it's, it's a bit fulfilling. Um. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Actually, around uh, 12 30 at night right now, I'm just really bored. Um, the pit was interesting because. Um, it tried to do something with Fallout that the rest of the game hadn't really touched on. There was a Dunwich building. Kind of hit on the horror elements. Um, but the pit, the pit was, it was scary. And I don't mean like scary as in like, you know, like a horror game kind of thing. But it was, it was bleak very very bleak and dark and it gave you a nice contrast of just how not dead the capital wasteland was by comparison to some of the other places in the world um you know the kind of thing that would make you kind of grateful to be where you were when you first started um some of the weapons are really cool in uh in the pit I really liked one of the SMGs. I think the perforator was really cool. Um, the moral implications of the pit were really, really good as far as um, putting you in a rock at a hard place. Um, you essentially end up either killing a kid or potentially dooming mankind, or at least in a small scale. So it's uh, it was almost like a, the same problem that you find with The Last of Us, except on a smaller scale and much, much, much uh, sooner than The Last of Us had released. So way before. Last of Us had even been in the pipeline. Um, what was the third DLC? Uh, Point Lookout. Point Lookout was great, actually. Um, a lot of people will harp on it. I really liked Point Lookout. Um, there was a lot to explore. It was actually interesting to go to places. Um, it felt like a place that had really been affected by the radiation it felt weird and foreign and almost I would, I would almost venture to say like Marwin-esque by comparison because it just felt so different from the rest of the like uh, wasteland but uh story-wise it was kind of lacking I mean there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot going on there. It was kind of interesting, um, but there's nothing particularly substantial. It seems you were just kind of uh, put in the middle of a feud and forced to choose a side, as so often happens when you're playing Fallout. Um, the last DLC, which should not have had to be the last DLC, it should have been the first DLC or even Vanilla, um, Broken Steel allowed you to continue after you beat the game in vanilla. I, uh, didn't particularly have any issue with the aforementioned, uh, problem of the ending of vanilla Fallout 3 because I had already had Broken Steel by the time I was actually really playing Fallout 3. Um, so I was fortunate for that, but 
looking back on just that awful potential experience, I would not have wanted to be in anyone's shoes who had to deal with that for that extended period of time. Um, New Vegas could have its own whole video dedicated to it. Not because I have a lot to complain about, but because I fucking love New Vegas. New Vegas is easily my favorite video game. And I'm not pulling any punches saying that. I don't even have to think about it, honestly. There's like, I, I have to spend a lot more time thinking about what my second favorite video game is. Compared to New Vegas is definitely my favorite video game. Um... Which isn't to say that it doesn't have its faults, because it definitely does. But it takes so much of what Fallout 3 tried to do and improves upon it vastly. Um, it's so much better of a game in almost every way. Um, it's DLC, though, really set that one home. If you play New Vegas without its DLC, compared to Fallout 3 with its DLC, Fallout 3 wins out. It's the better game. Better experience, better overall arc. But New Vegas, with its DLC, is a superior experience by far and I would actually venture to say that New Vegas with its DLC is better than Fallout 4 also hold on one moment I uh, seem to have someone who was bugging me at the door um, Anywho, as I was saying, uh, New Vegas, good. Three, meh. Uh, moving to four. <laughs> oh, God. It felt like we waited so, so long for four by comparison to the other two. And, I mean, in reality, we kind of did. I can only imagine what it must have been like for someone who played the second one to be waiting on the third one but they didn't really know they were waiting for the third one it wasn't it wasn't one of those things where they knew a fallout 3 would happen it was something that happened years and years later Let's begin with that. Fallout 4, right off the bat, commits a cardinal sin, as far as I'm concerned. Not just as a Fallout game, but as a role-playing game. Limiting your speech options to four measly options is already a bad thing. It's dumb. There's so many more ways to respond to any given comment, statement, approach, question, anything. <sighs> so, limiting to four options already hurts. Forcing those four options to be funneled within certain archetypes of speech, such as inquisitive, sarcastic, aggressive, and kind, hurts it far, far more. The nail in the coffin, though, is that you are given a hint about what your character will speak. And then you have to just roll the dice and expect that your character will say something akin to what you want to say. And it usually 
is only vaguely close to what you wanted to say. Sometimes it's outright wrong. Um, but, uh, I had extremely high hopes for Fallout 4, and that was very dumb of me. Um, a word to the wise of anyone who is seriously vested in the video game industry, um, do not get your hopes up for sequels ever. They will just disappoint you and crush your dreams. Uh, Fallout 4 does a lot of things to improve on the series. Um, settlement building was cool. It uh, probably wasn't done the best way. I completely lose all sense of immersion when I am able to place a small shack out of nowhere. Um, but I digress. Um, the story was decent. I would say it's a little bit better than three. Um, but you don't really find an option that feels like you have resolved any of the serious issues. No matter what path you choose, and trust me, I've done all of them, uh, you're kind of just left feeling like you were just a cog in the machine, or a, a pawn, if you will. You know, you'll, you'll be given all these fancy titles, you know, you're a, a, a paladin, and you're a, uh, a general, and you're a... a I don't know what the fuck it is that the uh, railroad calls you, but Institute will call you a... Uh, I don't fucking remember that either. CEO or something like that. It's not CEO, but the uh, director, I guess. I don't know. Um, they're all just titles. They're all just words. They don't really mean anything. You don't really have any pull in the, like, say-so of what that faction does. And it takes a long time for you to really realize that as a player. But uh, I've come to terms with that after playing so much of it. Um... <sighs> The factions themselves are slim pickings, to say the least. Um, the railroad has a noble cause, but uh, kind of gets muddled in everything. Um, the Institute, I think, is so ambitious that they, they lose sight of what they're really doing, or why they're really doing it. Um, the Minutemen have a noble goal, but it's so vague and so grand that it's not really obtainable without proper focus. And you can, you can see that happen in like a practical way, uh, if you try and, if you try and settle all of the settlements and keep them maintained. Keep them heavily fortified, keep them heavily defended. Um, you know, it's, it's a chore, to say the least. It is exhausting to keep those settlements happy and to keep them safe. It is nothing short of exhausting. I myself, I only keep one settlement uh, happy and healthy, and that's the one I use. And the rest of them, if I'm, if I'm in the park, if I'm in the area, and, you know, it says help defend Green Top Hills, Green Top Nursery, whatever, yeah, I'll swap through. I'll, I'll pass through and, you know, drop some heads. But if, if I'm not there when it happens, 
and I'm doing something else, I'm probably not going to travel over there and go out of my way to defend them. And that's that's not me as a person. That's me as a gamer. Because you know it's going to be the same thing. You know you're not going to be in for a nice, fun fight. It's going to be like three or four more rats, or it's going to be like three or four gunners, or it's going to be like three or four raiders, or it's going to be like four or five super mutants, or it's going to be one death claw. But, uh, the Brotherhood is where I get quite peeved. If there's one thing Fallout 3 really did great at, it was giving you a reason to really like the Brotherhood of Steel. Fallout 4 ruined that. And they had, they had lore reasons that made sense as to why it would be that way. But they ruined the Brotherhood of Steel. Everything that Lion's pride had come to do to make progress for the group was completely undone by Maxon. And they say that's what had to happen for the group to survive. I don't believe that. I feel like that's that's propaganda and that's just subjective. Um <sighs> Moving on from that headache, though. Um, ammunition types was one of the best features in Fallout New Vegas. Um, you could switch ammunition types if you had them. You could craft ammunition types if you had the expertise. And you could get some serious tactical advantage over opponents by having ammunition types that directly combat their advantages over you. Um, if you were smart, you would carry three or four different types of ammunition on you for a single weapon just so you had your options ready. Um, I can't tell you how many times you know, I'd be using a 50 cal BMG, and I would realize this doesn't have the power to pack through, or to punch through that death claw. You know, I, I gotta step it up, down on the deep end, switch over to those 50, uh, 50 BMG explosives. That'll, uh, that'll rip that death claw right up. Um, so that was, that was a big letdown with four, is removing ammunition types. Um, gun modification got a serious overhaul at the cost of guns themselves. New Vegas had a crazy amount of guns base model guns. I'm not talking the bullcrap that Fallout 4 tries to pull on us with the uh, uh, three or four base models for, you know, a couple different guns and then millions of combinations. It, it doesn't work for me. Um. The newest DLC finally had an AK-47 or a uh, Chinese assault rifle, but uh, it's too little too late, really. Um, and with DLC wrapping up, I feel like almost anyone who bought a season pass is feeling like there's something left to be desired. There was not enough content. And I, I guess what I should say, I should rephrase, there was plenty of content, there wasn't enough substance. Um, Automatron was a $10 expansion, 
it gave you about $10 worth of content. It was a fair price and it was a fair DLC. Um, Wasteland Workshop did next to nothing for the average player and still asked $5 out of you. <sighs> Far Harbor was supposed to be the first major story DLC and some might say the only major story DLC. And it was okay. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. But uh unless you were seriously invested in finding out Nick's past, there's not really a whole lot there. It's just another faction war. Um the uh, Contraptions Workshop was basically just Wasteland Workshop version 2. Um, the Vault Tech Workshop I was surprised by because I had assumed until recently that it was just another Workshop mod. But uh, it has a little bit of story to it, and that little bit of story is actually pretty decent. Um, it's fun. It's a nice, a nice break away from the monotony. <laughs> that being said, the settlement building is absolute shit. It's not fun to do. So, a DLC focused on doing that for story reasons gives you a little more reason to build settlements, but it doesn't make it any funner. Um, Nuka World actually blew my expectations out of the water. I was not expecting to like it at all. That doesn't mean it was particularly good. It was a it was a decent DLC. And it did a lot better than the previous DLC. And it did offer everything I would expect out of a Bethesda DLC. That being said, it was uh it was still really short. And as far as the options go for the faction choices, it was extremely short-sighted. Um, I myself don't like raiders. Um, they are immoral, and generally, they're they're bad guys. So, in a game where you don't actually have any kind of discernible gameplay mechanic moral compass. Because they got rid of karma, which was another huge mistake. Um, what reason do I have to keep them alive? They're raiders. They've taken all these people hostage in Nuka World. They've turned this once happy theme park into... Sorry about that, I had technical difficulties yet again. I guess it's just the length of the videos. Um, anywho, Nuka World. Um, so if you kill all the raiders, long story short, um, then you're, uh, you're kind of SOL as far as story content. Because uh, I suppose Bethesda didn't really anticipate you taking that route even though they clearly did, because there actually is a mission related to it. Um, but yeah, if you choose to take the same path that I did and kill all the raiders, you are going to miss out on a lot of content. So it's something you kind of just got to weigh. Um, that being said, uh, I think that actually wraps up what I wanted to talk about as far as Fallout. I I could probably go on for ages talking about all the little nuanced things, talk about every side quest. Uh, it's exhausting. And honestly, I just feel like the series has so much potential that it squanders almost every entry. Um, I'm not gonna lie, 
all of the Bethesda, but I really feel like Fallout needs to go back to Obsidian. Um, they did a great job with New Vegas, and I would absolutely love to see what that team could do with a proper development time and a proper budget. Um, so that's my opinion on the Fallout series. I hope you've enjoyed enduring me once again, uh, or perhaps for the first time, I'm not sure. I don't know how many of my videos you've watched. I don't really care. Um, feel free to leave a like or subscribe. I might start doing this more often because I'm bored. Uh, this has been DJ. I'll see you next time.